Beginning with this lesson, we're now going to translate over to testing specifically within the scope of a framework. So how can we write tests? In this case, I'm using Laravel for the Laravel framework. And then along the way, we're going to review lots of things like acceptance testing, how to use aspect mock to make PHP more natively testable. All of that good stuff will be covered. If we begin by creating a new test within app slash tests, and we'll call it example test.php. And now if I add a snippet here, we'll call it example test, and that's going to extend, in this case, test case. Now, what is this? Well, this is provided to us by Laravel. So when we extend test case, we're actually extending this class right here. And what this is going to do is basically boot up Laravel for us so that we can make use of Laravel's routing and some of the assertions and all of that good stuff. So unless you extend test case, you're not really going to be able to hook into various components in the Laravel framework. So let's write the most basic test. We'll just say test displays homepage. How would you do that? Well, we could use this call, and this once again is provided by Laravel. Laravel has a handful of wrapper methods that we can use, and we can say make a get request to the home page. So that's going to simulate the user visiting example.com like that. Then we can write an assertion. So we could say, I expect to see what? Do we expect to see hello world? Well, how would we do that? Well, we could say the response and then why don't we just var dump response get content that will get the HTML output or whatever was returned. If I now switch over to the routes file, here we are registering a route for a get request to basically the home page, and I'm going to return hello there. All right, let's run the tests. You'll notice that I can simply run PHP unit and it works, and that's because by default Laravel includes its own PHP unit.xml file. And also notice that it registers its own bootstrap. So you don't have to go through that phase of making sure that PHP unit first bootstraps the autoload file so that you can load all of your classes. That will be done for you automatically. Anyhow, if I return to the test, sure enough, we get hello there. So now let's write an assertion against that. Well, we could say this assert equals hello there, and then we'll verify that against response get content. Let's try it. Run it again, PHP unit, and it passes. It's as simple as that. If we need to make some other kind of request, like a post, a put, a patch, a delete, any of those, just specify it here. So if you want to verify that when we make a post request to, for example, slash login, that it does some kind of action, then you can grab the response like so. And then maybe you could say something like this, assert redirected to, and then maybe back to the home page. So that means whenever we post a login, ultimately you expect Laravel to redirect you back to the home page when all is said and done. That's the way that you would do this. Now, before we finish up with this introductory lesson, lots of times this is going to fail because you're not going to just return a string, you're going to return an HTML page. So if I open up our routes file and I instead return a view called hello, like that, and we run it again, we get an exception. That's just because I need to switch all of this back. There we go. All right, let's try it again. And now notice that we're actually getting that HTML. So it said I expected hello there, but instead we got this full block of HTML. So now we just want some way to say, I expect to see hello there somewhere. Maybe it would be within the body tag right here. How could we do that? Well, we have to use a little bit of trickery, but then we could translate that into a helper function. Well, if I delete those other lines, one way that we can do this is say this assert true, and then we could say string pose, grab response, get content, and then provide the needle. Hello there. And we want to verify that it doesn't return false. This would be one way, not the way I would recommend, but one way that you could do this. If I now run PHP unit, it will fail because we don't have hello there within the view. So now if I open that up and I write hello there, and we rerun it again, and now it's passing. So that's one way we could do it, but it's a bit sloppy, isn't it? There are other ways that we could do this. Another way that we could do it is instead say this client request, and what that's going to do is mostly the same thing, but it's instead going to return a crawler. More specifically, I mean a DOM crawler. Laravel leverages one of Symfony's components called DOM crawler, and this allows us to very easily filter through the DOM and write our assertions. Now I could say crawler filter 
and then let's look for a body element that contains the text hello there. That would be one way that we could do this. Now if we store that with found, and we die and var dump found, let's run it again, php unit, and notice what's going to get returned, that DOM crawler object. Now we can simply say this assert greater than zero, and we'll say count found, like that. All right, let's try it again. PHP unit, and we get green. However, if we were to look for hello world, of course that's going to fail, in which case this assertion message isn't very good. And whenever you're doing things that are a little more generic, like assert true or assert greater than, you can always add a third param and say expected to see text within view, or anything that you want really. But now if we load it, you'll see, yeah, we do get that response. So we could easily wrap this up within a helper method if we wanted to that you could then use in all of your projects. For example, we could have a protected method called C, and what that's going to do is say this client get crawler. We'll store this within a variable called crawler. And by the way, this client, you're getting access to that through the test case that we are extending here. So now we could just reuse some of this. So we could say found equals crawler filter body contains, but now we're going to make this equal to a variable called text. We'll add that right there. Now, once again, we can paste in this final line to write our assertion. This greater than zero, count found, expected to see text within view. You'd probably want to make that a little more dynamic, like expected to see, and then we'll say text within the view, something like that. That would definitely work. Now I can simply return this to this call, and we'll get rid of everything there. And next say this C, hello there. Now when we call this method, we're going to get the crawler. We're going to filter it down to a body element that contains this text, hello there. And we're going to assert that the number found is greater than zero. Because remember, we could see hello there multiple points within the view. So we want it to be anything more than zero. If I now run this once again, we're still going to get green. The only remaining thing you might want to do is offer the ability to search for this string directly within an element. If I want that to be contained within an H1, wouldn't that be nice if we could add that as a scope, so to speak? And we can. We can accept that and then say filter, and we'll say element that contains this text, and we'll set a default to body. That way you can search for hello there or if you want to limit it to an h1 tag, now it'll say filter an h1 that contains the text. If we run it, it will fail because it didn't see hello there. And if we go back and we fix this, now we will wrap this within an h1, and it should pass. And it does. Great, you've just built your first testing helper method, which you can then extract to a custom class that you include in your projects.